Hi guys, my name is Chad, and this is your new Premiere tutorial for the week. I decided to switch gears a little bit. I've been talking about Moho for the past few weeks, and we've been talking about splitting up your files using the Moho exporter and how to take advantage of layer comps and how to separate out your files when editing. So I thought I would take this opportunity to show you how you can work with different color effects very easily inside of Premiere when it comes to working with your cartoons or if you have film. So with that said, let's jump into Premiere and get started. What I have here is a sequence made up of another sequence. You can see that scene is located within my main sequence. And if I scrub this, you can see we have some animation playing as well. If I double click to go inside of scene, you're going to see we have different layers. So if I were to hide Zach as an example, he would then be removed from the sequence. And that's because I used layer comps and exported everything out separately. But I want to come back here to the main sequence. And if you look at the top, you'll see we have some tabs, assembly, editing, and of course color. And that's the one I'm on right now. And that's the one that I would like you to select if you're following along. Here on the right side, you'll see we have different categories that we can choose from. If I were to click on basic correction as an example, it's going to drop down a bunch of different options. And basically, we can quickly come in and make changes to the colors of the sequence, the layer, whatever you are working on at that time. So I could come in and we could even use a LUT. Click the drop down menu, we can browse for different LUTs, or I could choose one from the list if I wish. So I could click on one, and you can see it alters the way the film looks right away. But we don't need to go that route if we don't want to. I could just go back to none and then come down to the other sections, such as the temperature and tint. Just by clicking and dragging to the right, I can make the film or the cartoon look more warm or I can bring it to the left to cool off the colors. We can also work with tint. So I could come in and make this more pink or more green if I wish. And you can mix and match. So we could bring the tint up and then we could bring the colors down to be a little bit more cooler. Now let's go a little bit more cooler like that. And then for your tone, you can adjust the exposure, the contrast. So I could add more contrast to this if I wanted to. Let's bring that up. And then we could adjust the highlights as well. Maybe bring those down a little bit. Bring the shadows down. Maybe keep the whites at about where they're at. And then for the blacks, we can just kind of come in and fiddle with that a little bit. So I would say about like this obviously changes the look of the cartoon as we initially saw it. Now, when you're playing with all these options, you can always reset at the bottom. You can come up here to the top as well where it says basic correction and check this off. And when you do this, you'll see what it originally looked like before you applied those changes. But if you check it back on, it'll keep those changes and you can then revisit the color options. And you can always come down here and as I said, click reset or even click auto. And this will automatically try to correct the film for you if you wish. So those are your basic correction options. You also have what are called creative options. You can come in here and choose from a variety of looks and also add different looks. So you can see we have quite a few here and it works kind of similar to a LUT. So we could come in and let's just choose blue cold and you can see it alters the way everything looks. In fact, it kind of reminds me of like an old NES game or something with those colors. But nostalgia aside, you can also come in we can adjust the intensity so we can make this even more obvious or less, just depending on what you want to do. You could then double up and add more effects. So we could apply a faded film effect if we want. We can sharpen the footage or blur it out even. We can change the vibrance, which just adds different color options as well as the saturation, which allows you to saturate things. And as you can see, this is looking quite different from where we started. If I come up here and check off creative, you can see it looks like that compared to this. And then you have some other options down here. You can adjust your shadow tints and highlights using a wheel. 
And in fact, this wheel setup is very similar to speed grade. It's like you're having a little piece of speed grade now inside of Premiere. And this has been available for a while, but I haven't done a Premiere tutorial for a while, so I guess it's worth mentioning. But you can come in here and just drag around and adjust your tints that way if you wish, as well as adjust the balance on the bottom. And then you have other options for adjusting your colors. Let me just come up and check creative off just to bring us back to default. But we can come in and adjust the curves. So you can choose white, red, green, or blue. If we choose green, we can come in and adjust the greens based on the points we add here to this graph. So I could come in, we could do Bezier effects. And you can see as I'm doing this, we can really alter the way the greens look. They start low, go high, and all that stuff. And then we have the color wheels, which again are very speed grady, and they allow you to go deep with your color options. So if you really want to hone in on your colors, this is a great way to approach it. You have other options down here for your secondaries. So you can go to keys, you can adjust all that. And you have a vignette option on the bottom as well. So if you come down here, we could decrease the vignette, maybe bring the midpoint down a little bit as well. And you could then adjust the roundness and the feathering. We could put our creative color options back on. And now you have something that looks completely different from where we started. And finally, just one note, since we were talking about separating out files, if I were to double click and go inside of scene, click on, let's say Zach, I could apply these color options, any of these color options to just that layer. So we could go into Zach and let's just choose a different look. Let's try something a little bit more obvious. There we go. And then I could really intensify that. And you can see now it changes just that layer. And then I could back out to the main sequence and then we could apply effects over that effect. So now I could turn on the blue effect and you can see that it takes that other color setting that we did prior in the other sequence into consideration when applying the looks and all the settings that we changed to this sequence. And finally, also keep in mind that you don't have to directly apply these effects to the film itself. You do have access to adjustment layers in Premiere, so we could make a new adjustment layer. And then we could bring the adjustment layer on top, and then we could go in and add the effects on top, if you'd prefer to do it that way without putting the effects directly on the sequence. But again, that just gives you a little bit more control with being able to adjust the transparency of the adjustment layer and a few different things. And that is a little bit about applying color effects with the color panel inside of Premiere. And again, there are other ways to add color effects. You have the effects and presets panel in Premiere that also has color effects that you can apply. However, these options are so easy to work with and you can easily revert, make changes and stack your colors. So I think it's worth pointing out. And if you're looking to take your project, whether it's from Moho, Animate or wherever and bring it into Premiere and add a little oomph to it, you can do so very easily with the color tab. So with that said, I'm going to bow out for now. Thanks for watching. If you have more suggestions for tutorials, feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll see you next week.